Hello, this is Mr. Wynn, and this video is over applications of trigonometry. We're going to do word problems, angle of elevation, depression, and then linear and angular velocity. So here's the first word problem. Let negative 3, 4 be a point on the terminal side of theta. Find the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, and cotangent theta. So here, all you do is plot the point, negative 3, 4, you should know is in the second quadrant. Um, I'm generally going to draw this right triangle. Make sure you put theta closer to the x-axis, this way it's the bottom angle. Alright, because it's negative 3, 4, I know the height, the y, is 4, and the x is going to be negative 3. Make sure you keep the, it negative if it is. I'm going to find the hypotenuse, that's going to be Pythagorean theorem. So a squared plus b squared c squared, combine like terms, square root, and this h is always going to be positive, so we just found the hypotenuse is 5. Label HAO from the perspective of theta, so this is the opposite, this is the adjacent, this hypotenuse. Then you fill in each trig function. So sine is opposite over hypotenuse. This is so over h. So it's going to be positive 4 over positive 5. Cosine is ka, a over h. So it's going to be negative 3 over 5. Tangent is toa over a. So it's going to be 4 over negative 3. If I put the negative sign on top, it's a single negative fraction. Then we have cosecant. Remember, that's the reciprocal of sine. So instead of o over h, it's going to be h over o. So it's going to be 5 over 4. Secant is the reciprocal or flip fraction of cosine. So instead of negative 3 over 5, a over h, it's going to be h over a. So the negative 5 over 3. Or really, it's a 5 over negative 3, but the negative goes on top. And then cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent. So instead of uh, negative 4 over 3, it's going to be negative 3 over 4. All right, here's another one, very similar. Given that cosine theta is negative 6 over 7, now think about it, cosine's x values, where is x negative? x is negative on the left side, all right, so it could be quadrant 2 or 3. So now they're give us a second hint. They're saying and sine is less than 0. That means y is less than 0, y is negative. So where is y negative and cosine negative? It's down here, quadrant 3. So you have to use these two hints to figure out which quadrant you're in. But the same thing, find the sine, cosine, tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent. So we have this. Remember, this is really a over h. So a is negative 6, and I told you h early is always positive, so this is positive 7. All right, we do Pythagorean theorem. Um, this is a root a radical answer, that's fine. So we know, and then also it's negative. Remember, sine is negative down here. It's going down. All right, from there, you do what we did earlier. Sine is so over h, so that's negative 13 over 7. Ka is a over h, so negative 6 over 7. Toa is negative 13 over negative 6, but negative by negative is a positive. Alright, sine uh, and uh, reciprocal, cosecant, instead of over h, is h over o. So it's going to be 7 over negative 13. You get to rationalize that to get a negative 7 root 13 over 13. Secant will be the reciprocal of cosine, so instead of a over h, it's h over a, which is negative 7 over 6. Now remember, instead of using the picture, if you know these first three, just look at these three answers and flip them. So I could just look at this, negative 6 or 7, and just say, oh, negative 7 6. So for cotangent, that's going to be my trick. I'm not going to actually look at the picture. I said if tangent is root 13 over 6, I'm going to say that this is 6 over root 13. Rationalize that to get 6 root 13 over 13. All right. So angle of elevation and angle of depression problems are very common in trig. Remember the angle of elevation or depression always involves the horizontal. So the number one mistake kids always make is they draw the picture or they label angle incorrectly. So here's how I remember it. Angle of elevation problems are regular triangles looking up. So in both these triangles, thetas are considered angle of elevation because here's the horizontal. So it's a regular triangle, not upside down or flipped or anything, and it's looking upwards. It's the upward angle. All right, the reverse of that, angle of depression are upside down triangles looking down. So here's an upside down triangle, here's the horizontal. See, theta is touching the horizontal, touching the horizontal. So both of these are angles of depression. So the angle of elevation is actually the same as angle of depression, thanks to uh, alternate tiers being equal. So you can change the word if you want. So if something says there's the angle of depression 30 degrees, that's the same thing as the angle of depression of 30 degrees. But uh, look at this picture, and hopefully you can see why kids mess up. Here, x, angle x in both of these, are considered the angle elevation or depression. Down for this bottom triangle, x is the angle elevation. It's looking up with the horizontal. For the top triangle, it's with the horizontal and it's looking down. 
But a lot of kids think Y is angle depression. The Y is not a depression angle because it does not touch the horizontal at all. Neither is this Y an angle of elevation. So do not use these Y values. So that's why I said upside down triangle, top angle, or regular triangle looking up, bottom angle. I do not use the Y area because that is neither the angle of elevation or depression. So let's try the problem. An anti foot ramp forms a 30 degree angle with the ground. How high is it above the ground? Now the ramp's 18 feet. That's, that's how long the whole ramp is. So it's at a diagonal. 30 degrees of the ground is this angle right here. Now this is not a real trig problem. This is a 45, uh, 30, 60, 90 special right triangle problem. So if we use the patterns. You know the 18 goes with the 90, which is 2x. So if I divide by 2, I get 9 feet is the 30, and that's what they want the other height. So the height is 9 feet tall. Make sure you use units. If they wanted this, it would be a 9 square root 3. All right, here's a real trig problem. A 5 foot 6 inch surveyor is standing 115 feet from the Washington Monument. He measured the angle elevation for his eye level to the top of the monument to be 78.3 degrees. How tall is the monument? Alright, so first we should convert 6 inches to feet using dimensional analysis. Hopefully not do that. So you get half a foot. Add that to the, the 5 feet. So the guy is really 5.5 feet tall or 5.5 feet tall. So you know 6 inches half a foot. Then you're going to draw the picture correctly. So here's how it should look. We have this guy, he's 5.5 feet. You don't have mixed units. He's looking up to a building. All right, now his eye level, not, not, not his height. So the building, the triangle right here, if you notice, is X feet tall, we don't know it. But that just include his original 5.5. So we have to add these two numbers together once we find it. Here's the angle of elevation. Again, it's the regular triangle looking upwards with the horizontal. And then he's 100 feet away, so that's the bottom. That's the bottom side of this right triangle because this is a 90 degree angle. All right, we're going to find the trig function. We have something next to O and A. Remember, because if this is our angle, we have no hypotenuse. Here's the opposite. Here's the adjacent. So that's going to be tangent. So tangent of 78.3 degrees is X or 115. Remember, leave tangent of 78.3 degrees alone because we don't know its value. Uh, if it's on the unit circle, though, then you have to replace with the exact value, but 78.3 degrees is not a nice angle. All right, we're going to solve for X. All we can do is just multiply both sides by 115. And that's it. This is the calculator ready part for this top angle. All right, now we have to add the height together. So the height of the monument is this 5.5 plus this 115 tan 78.3 number. That's our calculator ready answer. Now, if you had a calculator, you could type it in and you get 560.814 feet. But make sure the calculator mode is in degrees because our angle is in degrees. If our angle is in radians, you'd keep your calculator mode in radians. So here's what it looks like. So if I go to mode, I am in degrees, so that's good. I'm going to go up and find it. I typed it in uh, right here. Yeah, so 5.5 plus 115 tan 78.3. I get 560.814 because the 9 rounds at 3 up. Right, here's another example. An eagle 60 meters in the sky spots a worm on the ground. If the horizontal distance from the eagle to the worm is along the ground is 250 meters, find the angle of depression. All right, so... Draw the picture carefully, and this is where a lot of kids mess up, and I'll show you why. So here's my eagle, and here's the worm. Now remember, it's angle pressure, so upside down triangle with this theta inside here, with the horizontal. A lot of kids say, oh, 60 meters in the air is this height. Yes, that's correct, but this height doesn't go here. It goes over here. And when they read 250 meters horizontal on the ground, they think it's this right here. That's why they always put the wrong angle of depression. They think this angle is depression, but it's not. Angle depression is right here. So horizontal means left to right, so that's why this is 250, and then 60 high is right here. So here's the correct picture. All right, find the trick function you're using. We have O and A again, so again, that's tangent. So TOA, tangent of this angle is 60 over 250, opposite over adjacent. Reduce that. Now to get rid of uh, solve for theta, we have to get rid of this tangent function. Remember, we can use inverses. I'm going to tan inverse both sides. So apply the inverse tangent function to both sides. Remember, composition inverses will undo each other and just leave the input theta. So the left side is theta, and the right side is tangent inverse of 6 over 25. We don't know what that actual number is. That's the most we can do the calculator. So that's our calculator ready answer. But if you type in the calculator, you will get 13.496 degrees. Just make sure you press second to get the inverse trig functions. So if you see right here, I press second tan to get this tan negative 1, 6 over 25. All right, special notation. When dealing with trig functions, we have a special name for the inverse. So earlier, uh, well, you should know, if you have sine, sine inverse will be its inverse, right? We also call sine inverse arc sine. 
All right, so same for cosine. You can say cos inverse, or you can say arc cosine. And of course, this works for arc tangent, arc cosecant, arc secant, arc cotangent. All right, so to be sure, these two things are exact same thing. Sine inverse of sine cancel out to 60. Arc sine of sine cancel out to 60. The reason why we do this is a lot of people are confused about this negative one. Some people think it's an exponent, but it's not. Exponent means you just flip the fraction, but this is not flipping a fraction. This is actually inverse. This is a special notation for it. So to not get confused on negative one power, because it's not a power in this case, we write arc sine. But you use either one you want. All right, linear velocity, angular velocity are a type of problem most kids find confusing, but they're simply a conversion or dimensional analysis problem. The key to solving these problems is knowing what conversion fraction to use. Here are the two big ones. One revolution is 2 pi radians, because you know the circle is 2 pi radiuses, and then radii. And one revolution is 36 degrees. So figure out if you're in degrees or you're in radians. All right, linear velocity, I'll go right here, talks about how fast something's going along a straight line in terms of distance, for example, 5 meters per second. You would need to straighten out the circle to find out how long it is, which is just circumference, right? 2 pi times the radius, then divide by time. Angular velocity is actually a lot easier, it's less work. Talk about how fast something's rotating in terms of angles. For example, it's going 5 radians per minute, or half a revolution per minute. All right, so let's try a problem. A Ferris wheel has a radius of 20 meters. The wheel makes five revolutions every two minutes. Find its linear velocity. So first we start with the fact. It's going five revolutions every two minutes. Now I need to dimension that. I got rid of revolution. So we have the fact. One revolution on bottom is two pi. And because I'm wanting the linear speed, I need to use meters. So up two pi r, I filled in r is 20. All right. And then I get rid of the minutes. So minutes is going top and seconds going bottom because they want, uh, I didn't say, but they want it in meters per second. All right, so you know, you cross out revolution, revolution, minutes, minutes, all this stuff is meters on top, seconds on bottom. Multiply the fractions, top times top, so 5 times 2 is 10, times pi is 10 pi, times 20 is 200 pi meters. Then bottom 2 times 60 is 120 seconds. Reduce, 200 divided by 120 is uh, 5 over 3, you divide top by 40, and that's your answer. Now if you calculate, you can type in the calculator and you'll get 5.236 meters per second. All right, so that's what I did right here, 5 pi over 3. But if you really think about it, it's going 5 circles, right? So how much is one circle? It's 2 pi 20, 2 pi r. So a full circle is 125 meters. We're doing 5 circles times by 5, I get 5, 628. So it's going 620 feet meters in uh, 2 minutes. Now, I say that's 120, so I divide 120, I get the same 5.236 answer. All right, so that's linear velocity. Now let's try angular velocity. So same question, finds angular velocity in radians per second and then degrees per second. So first, start with fact, five revolutions per two minutes, get rid of revolutions. So revolutions on the bottom, radians on top. Now, for, when we talk about radians, we don't care about the radius because a radian is a radius, right? So it's less than numbers. And then get rid of minutes by uh, putting minutes on top, seconds on bottom. Multiply it out, revolutions cancel revolutions, minutes cross out minutes. All we have now is five times two pi is 10 pi on top, 10 pi radians. 2 times 60 is 120 seconds on bottom. I can uh, reduce that, divide top by 10, get pi radians over 12 seconds. Pi over 12 radians per second. If I type in the calculator, pi over 12 is roughly 0.262 radians per second. So that's the answer there. Let's try uh, degrees. Let's see what it says. It's the same fact, but now one revolution is 360 degrees. Again, degrees is own units. And then get rid of minutes, minutes on top, seconds on bottom. Cancel things out. So revolution across the revolutions, minutes across minutes. And I even did 360 divided 60, get 6 here, 6 degrees. And I should have done 6 divided 2 to 3, but that's okay. So right now I'm at 30 degrees over 2 seconds, which reduces to 15 degrees per second. Now notice, if I convert 15 degrees into radians, remember? So 15 degrees times, I'm going to do pi radians over 180 degrees, because so degrees cross out degrees you'll get the same 0.262 answer. So you could have just converted this to degrees right away, or I could have converted this to radians. So it's just a dimensional analysis problem. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. Make sure you ask any questions. See you soon. Bye.